everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz. And today we are here for uh, brilliant neon and lighting effects using the new Topaz Glow. Topaz Glow can help you create very distinctive effects that are really full of this vibrant energy and neon light. And so we're going to be going through uh, different ways to create that uh, very simply by using a preset or um, customizing it using the sliders. And we're going to not only be taking a look at um, this neon effect, which really kind of it, the neon effect basically darkens the background of an image and it makes that the subject appear really in focus and infused with this radiant light that you see, especially where the forms and lines of the subject are. So we're going to be covering that, but then we're going to move on to how to incorporate this type of light that you see on your screen right now into your original image. So different types of lighting effects and how to apply those. And first I want to show you a few just before and afters, just so you can start to see the kind of effects that you can achieve uh, within Topaz Glow when you're working on this more neon effect. So let's just go through a few of the images that I have here. This is an image I actually worked on yesterday during the intro, uh, which will be posted to our YouTube page. But this was more of a natural neon effect, and this was actually um, a little bit customized. So, but it started off with natural neon three, which is a preset. Here we have a neon sign. This is the original. I thought it was pretty bland, the whole image itself, but I thought, you know, what happens when I take this neon sign into uh, topaz glow and apply the neon sign preset and this is what happened and this is just a preset and I love this image at this point because much more graphic and really has some interest to it. Now here's an example of how you blend back in the um, effects these really kind of electric uh, streaks of light back into an image or blend it in certain ways to really enhance certain areas but leave other areas alone. So here's the original image and after several customized effects, I was able to achieve this effect, which I really enjoyed. Here is another example of these lighting effects being applied on top of the image. So it doesn't necessarily go to a full neon effect where you have that really, really dark background, but it definitely applies this electrical type of atmosphere to the image on top of it. This is the image we're going to be covering first today, so I'll just continue real quick. This is another tiger image, and this is using just black, brilliant on black three, and that's a preset within our graphic collection. Here's the original, and again, this is a one-click preset. Here is an image of a cityscape, and I thought this might be a really good opportunity just to kind of saturate and really get those lights to have little streaks of energy, and was able to achieve this very quickly. This was just a preset as well, except I did use a blending mode, which um, I believe it was the overlay or soft light blending mode, which allowed for me to keep some of the depth of the clownfish's eye and other blacks within the image, but still get these really bright neon colors. We're gonna talk a little bit more about blending modes within this session. This is the second image we're gonna cover here today. So I'll jump into this after the tiger image and really show how to uh, move beyond just the neon effect. Although this image really takes advantage of that neon effect, this particular result that we're seeing here. Um, here's the original image and the after image. We're gonna see all sorts of after images with this particular car later on in the session. Here's an image of um, an architecture, this Abbey. Um, I thought this was just, I think that neon or topaz glow is really quite spectacular with certain architectural imagery and very graphic. And so when you have these really strong lines, you can really start to get some graphic and really nice images. And so this takes advantage of the neon effect with the darker background, but still incorporates a lot of the colors that were in the original. Now this is a, one of my favorites too, just to kind of show that you can really have a colorful effect, but still have a lot of the original image color. All right, so let's go back to this tiger image and go into the program. 
those are two different types. So I'm going to take this background image and make a copy just by pressing Control or Command J, Command J on a Mac. I, I'm using Windows here today. Um, and I am using Topaz Glow as a plugin. However, Topaz Glow is a standalone application as well. So you do not need to use it within any sort of host application. The only reason I'm doing so here today is because I like to show you all those before and afters at the beginning of the session just to uh, show you the different effects. So to access with as a plugin though through Photoshop you just go to Topaz Labs under the filters menu and go down to Topaz Glow and it will open up the program. I'm still working in my uh, trial mode within this particular uh, computer webinar system so I'm just going to say continue trial and we already have uh, whatever I applied last within the Topaz Glow program is going to show up on the next image that I bring into the program. That's very similar to the rest of our um, programs and that is built in for actions and uh, pressing control F within Photoshop just to get a repeat of your um, last used filter. So that is meant to happen, but if you want to reset it, all you need to do is come over here to your uh, slider panel. It'll pop up whenever you click on that little slider icon and you can reset it to the original image. Or you can just start choosing some of the presets within the different collections. For this more brilliant light and neon effects, we have two collections that I suggest you look at. The first is going to be neon, and this is really the most obvious as far as creating that neon look. Um, you can do things like blazing neon, which really uh, take the natural color of your image and apply neon-esque color. So you'll see really, really, really bright neon green, neon uh, magenta, neon blue, and it will really incorporate those um, like kind of stereotypical neon colors into the more natural colors of your image. Now one quick tip, if you like the overall energy that this type of lighting is producing, but you don't like this uh, incorporation of these non-natural colors, it's very simple to keep the same energy with that um, lighting effect and take out that color. Just click into the preset. If you just click one more time on the preset that you've chosen, it'll open up this slider panel and go directly down to your edge color because most likely if you're seeing these really um, kind of abstract colors, it's being produced by this edge color slider. Just take that down and you're going to see a much more natural color start to appear that is being um, brought in from this original color in your image. So that's just a quick tip as far as getting a more natural effect but still keeping that same um, energy that you might find within these blazing neon presets or any of the neon or glowing uh, effects that have these um, non-natural colors. So you have those more really um, strong neon effects and this is the simple way of achieving those. You can just scroll through and find one that really suits your uh, taste for the particular image. And we have all different types within here. We have ones that have more of this kind of rounded edged, smooth, fibrous effect like you see here in the Brilliant Fibers presets. Or we have um, more strong lines things that really just, just very, very line designs like the glowing wires presets that we have here for you. And then um, down here at the bottom, if you want more natural colors, we have these natural neon presets, which are pretty cool. And then um, just keep on going through all of these different presets. And this is the easy way of achieving um, this natural or this neon uh, or brilliant lighting effects that you can get with this program. The next uh, category that I suggest you take a look at just for um, well maybe a couple categories the graphic preset the graphic collection is usually going to be more uh, hard lines and soft edges but there are several presets in here such as the brilliant on black presets that take advantage of that darker base and and really highlight the um, lighter colors and the stronger edges to create that um, lighting effect that we're after and then within the fantasy collection, you'll see quite a few such as Electrify and Electrify 2 that take advantage of that as well. 
So just so you know where those presets are. Now let's talk about actually creating something or customizing it from a preset. So I already showed you how easy it is to get into a preset, let's say from, let's this time, let's do the glowing wires one. And doing things as simple as taking your edge color down just to bring in a natural color. Once you get familiar with these uh, sliders, you'll know what you need to do as far as making maybe the electrical lighting effect really stand out and become much more brighter. There's a couple different things that I suggest. Take your Electrify up, and that's going to start giving a little bit more depth to the effect overall and uh, stand out some of the stronger form or lines and forms within the image. The next one is going to be the detail strength. Detail strength will just um, increase the kind of contrast between the lines and um, make them pop out as well. You can always come in and take your brightness up a little. Uh, just know that as you take your brightness up, you will start to see some of the base image or your original image start to come through. Now, some people are okay with that and they want to apply this on top of the image, um, but if you don't, you can take that brightness down and still get um, some nice glowing effects with that really dark background. And one way that I also suggest you like come in and, and just work with this lighting effect not only in the uh, not only up here in this primary glow, but go down to your secondary glow as well, and kind of work on that same those same sliders I just talked about. So come in, maybe hit your electrify and see my see what happens, and that really brightened it up a little bit too much for me. This brightness is also way down, so maybe if I take this brightness, oh there we go, we'll start to get a little bit more of what we're looking for. Maybe taking the contrast down just a touch. The reason that we have a primary and secondary glow is to give you the ability to get very distinct and um, heavy effects. You can tell this program can definitely go way beyond natural <laughs> effects and produce these really brilliant lighting, um, fibrous effects that you have here. But sometimes you need even more control than just this primary glow. You need a secondary glow to really achieve that really darker background. You need two brightness controls. So sometimes when, when these presets have both of the secondary or primary and secondary, come down to your secondary, play with those as well to tweak the preset to exactly where you want it. One area that, or one uh, slider that I think you definitely need to know about when it comes to these effects, this neon effect, is the simplified details slider. Sometimes whenever you have um, an image that has a lot of details, especially um, like an image like this has a ton of small details, all that fur. So you have a lot of busy wires kind of connecting with each other. If you want to simplify that and remove some of those, um, all that kind of busyness within the areas of the small details, you can come over here to your simplified detail sliders. There's one in the primary glow and there's one in the secondary glow. I would say start with your primary glow and just take that up and you'll see some of those effects are gonna be removed. So you can start seeing a little bit more depth into your image, which I really like. There we go. So it just kind of takes away the uh, busyness of all of those lines uh, coming together. So the simplified details is very important, at least for my workflow when it comes to these types of effects. Now let's talk about how to create this effect from scratch. Because sometimes you get to a point and you say, I just want to start this all over and create something on my own. I don't even want to start from a preset. So you can easily do that with just knowing a few different sliders to get to a more neon effect that's going to darken your background and really um, bring out and kind of infuse the lines within your image or the hard edges within your image with this kind of electrical light. Um, you'll just need to know a few different sliders. Let me go ahead and press reset all just by clicking on the reset all arrow within the slider panel. And now I can start up at the top in my primary glow and tell you a few of the different sliders that I think um, you might need to know about. So again, the primary glow is going to be 
the area that has that initial effect. Um, and the glow strength is gonna be where you start out. So as you take your glow strength up, I would suggest, number one, if you're trying to get a more neon effect that has bright edges, you're going to want to stick to the light glow type. If you go to the dark glow type, that's going to give you more of like sketch-like or darker edges that'll be really great for a white background if you want to go more towards a sketch-like um, type of effect. But if you're going for more of a neon effect, go towards your light glow type and take your glow strength up. Now, as you take your glow strength up, it seems soft, but if you scroll into your image, you'll start to see that you have these lines that are being formed um, and kind of connected and interweaved uh, that you see uh, along the details within your image. So it kind of fall, follows the uh, form and line within your image and creates this abstract kind of tangled weave of light. So as you take your glow strength up, those effects are gonna become more and more. But again, when you scroll out, you don't necessarily see it really, really obviously because you have this really natural soft glow happening as well. But I still like to take that glow strength up and just start with that. And then coming down to your effect sharpness. As you take your effect sharpness up, you'll start to um, make these lines themselves just start to stand out. And so these kind of streaks of wispy streaks will just start to uh, get a little bit sharper, but they don't necessarily stand out like you would if you were really increasing the details. So before I even go down into the sliders that popped out whenever I moved my effect sharpness up, I like to come down to my detail strength and just boost that and start to really bring out those um, streaks of light so I can pay attention to them as I continue on my way. So I'm just going to boost that up with my detail strength and then come back up to my electrify, simplify details and edge color. My electrify is going to, um, well, there you go. It really makes those streaks of light stand out, but it's also going to make them much lighter. And it will, as you increase this electrify, start to make the contrast between the the larger details a little bit more um, obvious. So when you just boost it up a little, it's gonna work on all of those small uh, areas of texture that are being created here. But as you keep boosting that electrify, you'll really start to see a difference within the larger details like we do here. The eyes start to stand out, these lines on um, Tiger's face that really give it character start to stand out. So I'm gonna boost that up quite a bit. And then we get to our simplify details and we already went over this slider and I do wanna simplify my details quite a bit here. So I'm going to increase that maybe to about right there. And I'm going to take my effect sharpness even higher. Okay, I like that. And then we get down to our edge color. I want to produce more of a natural color, so I'm not going to add in all of this um, neon, uh, more stereotypical neon type colors. Um, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to continue down. I've already worked with my detail strength and I'm pretty happy with that, but now we get down to our detail size. The slider pops out after you move the detail strength slider. So now you can tell the program which size details basically to be considered details that you're gonna be strengthening. As you move this down from zero, it's going to tell the program, look at this, look at even smaller details than you're already looking at and treat that as detail as well. And what that will do is produce smaller, more finer effects because it's telling the program there's more detail. As you move this, towards the right of zero, it will tell the program, okay, kind of ignore all these really small details and only focus in on the larger details, which will actually produce less results, but it'll be much stronger and you have more depth to it. And for this particular image, I'm gonna take my detail size up and get a little bit more, um, get a little bit more of those smaller uh, streaks to go away. And then we get down to the brightness. Now the brightness is probably the most, one of the most important sliders when it comes to this neon effect because majority of the time you're going to want a dark background. And what's cool about Topaz Glow is even as you take your brightness down, you still keep these fibrous streaks of light that you've created um, from the sliders above. So it'll really start to you know, take your shadow areas down and It'll take your overall effect down as well, but we can boost that up 
with the sliders below. But to get that neon effect, you're really going to want to take that brightness uh, fairly down. Don't take it all the way down because as you do that, it will just, um, well, with the secondary glow as well, it'll, it'll really go quite low and you lose some of that uh, depth to your streaks of light. So I'm just going to take that about halfway down. And then you come to your contrast. Contrast is also really important because this is how you boost up or one of the ways that you can boost up the brightness and kind of electricity of the light that's coming through. So, and it brings back some of the color. I forgot that, <laughs> which is really nice. So it's going to um, make the shadows even darker, the brighter areas, such as the little streaks of light, even lighter. And then we can come to our saturation. And I'm not really, I don't really need a lot of saturation coming through, but just to show you what it does, it will really saturate everything um, in your image. And if you still have your, a lot of the underlying image there, it'll really start to bring that back and kind of fill in the holes with color. So those are the main, um, sliders that you need to know about to create this neon effect. Um, you can always come down to your glow spread just to uh, make the edges of the uh, streaks a little bit more diffused and it widens them a little bit and spreads them out. So you can always uh, kind of uh, it, increase that if that's the look you're after. The, the same sliders are gonna be important within the secondary glow if you're not quite satisfied, and I'm not quite satisfied here yet. I really wanna get a very affected image. So I do wanna continue to increase my glow strength and really get those fibers connected and kind of getting a lot of flow and movement within there. So I like that effect. But now after I've taken my glow strength up, it has, again, not only increased the streaks of light but softened everything so you can manage that with the effect sharpness really get those lines to sharpen up and then you can come in and use your electrify just to give it a little bit more depth and that was a lot more let's just take that down just a touch and if it comes out a little bit too much when you electrify you can use that simplify details to get rid of some of those uh details that are, are causing it to be a little bit more busy again. Here we have our brightness and contrast as well, which is important if you're going for a more neon effect. So here you can come in and take your brightness down even farther to really get that effect that it's on a black background. And you can boost your contrast up, but something that's kind of interesting within a glow, sometimes going down will actually help as well. Because it's a secondary contrast, it'll sometimes have an opposite effect. So try both ways and you'll get see very interesting results. So for this one, I'm gonna go a little bit more right to bring back in some of the color. So I'm happy there. And then I have my color module. This, I'm happy with the effect overall. If I wanted to kind of finish it off a little bit, I could go into my color module and maybe increase the saturation of my yellow specifically, get some of those eyes to, Get his eyes to stand out um, and then maybe my orange saturation I want to boost that just a little bit more maybe make it a bit more light can quickly come in and do that color module is very powerful if you want to go in especially with these uh, neon or brilliant lighting effects you can specify which color range you want to boost up or desaturate or saturate uh, so you have a lot of control within this color module. If you want to do an overall saturation or lightness or hue shift, you can just click on the very left swatch, which is your overall swatch, and you can come in and just do a quick overall saturation. And you can change your hue as well. And then we get down into our finishing touches. Now the finishing touches will give you the opportunity to kind of work with the um, streaks of light and how they're being affected. The most important ones are gonna be your smudge and sharpness. The smudge will start to give a lot more flow and smoothness to those streaks of light. So as you take that up, you'll start to see they just smooth out and kind of flow into one another and you start to get this very lovely uh, flowing lines. So you can have a more um, edgier effect like this or 
a more flowing effect. But sometimes when you take that smudge up and you have that flowing effect going on, it feels like it smears your entire image and you lose the sharpness that really um, defines this type of look. So the sharpness slider will work with your smudge slider so you can have those really flowing smooth lines but you can come in and now sharpen it and just clean up those edges to get sharper effects. If you want to increase the contrast between those lines and the dark background, you can take your sharp radius up and really have those stand out. So I'm gonna just take that up a notch. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm pretty happy. I've created this more brilliant lighting effect on a very dark background. It's more of a natural neon type of color. It's not super neon-esque, but it is um, really infusing all of the details um, with this really nice light that's coming through. So I'm happy here. I'm just gonna press okay and get back into my program. And I hope that gives you a really good idea of how to create this type of an effect within Topaz Glow and which sliders to not only tweak if you start off with a preset, but which sliders you need to know about if you're trying to customize your own effect from scratch, which we just did. Now I wanna go into this image of the car and really show you how these neon and brilliant light effects can interact with your image to not only create an, a, a neon effect, but you can blend it back into your image in ways that enhance the image with these brilliant lighting effects, um, but you still have a, a photographic image instead of a, a piece of digital art. So let's see here, let me go ahead and click off of the, or take that neon effect off and I'll just make a quick copy of my background. Go into filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Glow. Continue. And here I can start with some really cool um, neon effects for this image, which this is a great one. The blazing neon effects are awesome for this image. So I really like this blazing neon one if I was trying to create just a neon effect and, and then there you go, I'd be done. But what's cool is we have these blending options down here on the lower left that are going to allow you to blend this light that you've created uh, back in with your image in certain ways. And so blending modes, if you're unfamiliar, are basically just different ways for layers to interact with each other. And you can think of within Topaz Glow as your original image as your base layer and this effect that you've created as your layer that's sitting on top. So whenever you change your blend mode, it's going to change the way that this layer that you're looking at, which is the effect, interacts with your image layer, which is on the bottom. So multiply, if um, you're unfamiliar, multiply is basically a darkening blend. And you can think about it like, um, it looks at the color information on both layers and multiplies that base color by this top blend color. So if um, it's always gonna be darker, so that's, that's one thing to know about, but if you're multiplying any color with black, which we are a lot within this image, um, with the underlying image actually, it's gonna produce uh, a black image. Um, if you're multiplying any of the color with white, the color is gonna stay unchanged. Now you can think about that base layer, not this layer as the, um, as the layer it's gonna look at. So when we press multiply, You'll see that it makes everything a little bit darker and it keeps that black that we've created because it's uh, trying to blend that with the layer below. Screen is gonna be more of a lighting effect and um, kind of the opposite, I guess, you can think about that the multiply does. So here we are. If we screen, this is something that I use quite a bit if I want to apply these more brilliant streaks of light to my base image and have just those lights come through. So here's before and after. And you can see these lights are just applied to the more uh, stronger edges and forms within my image. Again, here's before and after. 
And you can start to get some very cool effects this way. And then you can work with your contrast blend, and that's going to be your overlay, soft light, and hard light. And what that will do is um, maintain the really dark areas and maintain the really light areas and blend it together in different ways. So it's going to keep, um, it's going to preserve that contrast and blend in different ways. So for this image, Let's take a look at some of the other presets just to go play with it for a minute. Um, I had a blending session yesterday and I opened this image up at the end after the session and was just playing around. I saw some really cool effects that I was able to achieve. So let's go into maybe the fantasy. I think that's where it is. I have a couple presets in here called um, metal, heavy metal. Here we go. So here we have these heavy metal presets that are going to transform your image into something that has a very um, metal-esque color or a feeling to it. And we have two of those presets. But when you blend it in to an image using the blend modes, you'll start to see all sorts of possibilities. So here, if you use a multiply, it's really going to feel like you actually have maybe uh, taken, this base is actually a metal base and you have kind of printed on top of it with your colors. Or when you do an overlay, it'll mix it really nice and really give the overall appearance of having a metallic sheen to your image. Um, but it uses the blend modes of that heavy metal preset with the image itself. So you can get these really cool lighting effects, these brilliant lighting effects, but not necessarily transform your image entirely. You can just add those in to really enhance the subject of your image. So those are really, the blend modes are really important to know about within this program, I think. <clears throat> But I hope so far you've seen different ways of creating the neon effects and how to really utilize those brilliant lighting effects that Glow can create and uh, work with them in your original image in different ways, not just creating a new effect altogether.